morning, everyone. I am so excited to be here. I can't even tell you how exciting it is. I would like to thank Patty Owens and Dave Fernie for giving up a year of their life to make this spectacular event happen. So now I'm supposed to talk to you about infinity, and I don't know why they asked anyone else to speak here today, because I'm never going to be done. <laughs> so it's going to be a little bit of a problem to talk to you about infinity, because we really can't complete an infinite task, nor can you. So I think what I have to talk about is the concept of infinity in less than or equal to 18 minutes. Really, David? Really? OK. So we have to talk about the concept of infinity. And in order to do that, we're going to talk about the size of sets. Now, you all know what a set is. A set is a collection of objects. So let's look at a couple of sets. These two sets, the V set, has, has a few elements. And X has a few elements. And I want to know, are these two sets the same size? So we can count the number of elements in the set, and we can see that set V has five elements, set X has five elements, and mathematically we say those two sets have the same cardinality, which means they are the same size. They are not the same set, but they are the same size. So we could count the elements in a set, but if we're going to go to infinity, we're not going to be able to count the elements in a set. So maybe we should think of another way to compare the size of sets. So let's make what we call a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets. Let's see if every member of V matches with exactly one member of X. And it looks like they do. Now, I could have done this in many other ways. We could have matched A with 4 and, and U with 1. We could have done it other ways. But every element of V has exactly one matching element in X. I like to say they each have a dancing partner. Nobody is left out. Nobody has two dancing partners. It all matches perfectly. This is called a one-to-one -one correspondence between the sets, and it can show that the two sets are the same size. So let's try it again. These two sets the same size? Well, I don't want to count the elements in the set, so let's see if we can make a one-to-one -one correspondence between these sets. Oh, dear. The element F in set A does not have a dancing partner. Set A has more elements in it than set B. I don't know how many more. Well, actually, I do here because you can see that it's just one. But set A's cardinality is larger than set B. We can say that set A is larger than set B beyond a shadow of a doubt. So now let's take this concept to infinite sets. Let's look at a couple infinite sets that I'm sure you're aware of. Let's look at the even and the odd numbers. In your heart of hearts, do you think the even and the odd numbers have the same number of elements? Probably yes, OK? I can't count the elements in E, because we'll never get out of here today. And I can't count the elements in O. But can I show a one-to-one -one correspondence between the elements in those sets? And I think we can. Match every element of E with exactly one less than it in the, in the set O, and you will have a match set forever? Will there ever be a member of either set that does not have one and only one dancing partner? These two sets look like this works. This is a proof that these two sets are the same size. And that made sense to us, because you kind of felt it in your heart. The evens and the odds have the same number of elements. What about the regular natural numbers and the evens? Well, wait a minute. There's some natural numbers that are not even, right? Infinitely many of them, right? So the even numbers is what we call a proper subset of the natural numbers. There are, every even number is a natural number, but there are many natural numbers that are not even. So the even numbers are a proper subset of the natural numbers. In the finite world, proper subsets are smaller than the set itself. But in the infinite world, can I make a one-to-one -one correspondence between these sets? I think I can. I think I can. Match every element in N with its double. Every element of N will have an exact partner in the even numbers. So I think I'm proving to you that the even numbers and the natural numbers are the same size. But I want you to think about this. Let's fill this room with natural numbers. Fill this room with natural numbers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, dot, dot, dot. You know how to fill this room with natural numbers. And we'll send the odd numbers in the hall. How many numbers do we have left in the room? The same number we started with. And if we bring those odd numbers back, we will still have the same number we started with. 
infinity acts very differently than finite sets. With infinite sets, you can have, and often do have, a proper subset that is the same size as the original set. If you have a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers, mathematically we call that countable, listable. We can list every member in the even numbers as the first element, the second element, the third element, the fourth element. These two sets are the same size. So how about these? Well, wait a minute now. Now one of these sets goes off to infinity in two directions. What are we going to do about that? What are we going to do about that? Now, if you're one of my students, you'll make this one-to-one -one correspondence. And then I'll have to say, hmm, I don't like this one-to-one -one correspondence. Negative 72 doesn't have a dancing partner. Negative a million doesn't have a dancing partner. Negative four doesn't have a dancing partner. Any number less than or equal to negative four does not have a dancing partner. This is not a good one-to-one -one correspondence. But that's not what we need to show. We need to show, does there exist a good one-to-one -one correspondence? So let's try again. Let's try again. Let's take the natural numbers and the integers, and let's take one and match it with zero. OK, what are we going to do now? Let's match two with one and three with negative one, and four with two, and five with negative two, and six with three, and seven with negative three, and will this go on forever? I think it will, won't it? There will be never a natural number that doesn't match with exactly one integer. That set that looks like it's going on in two directions is the same size as the original set. The same size as the original set. All these infinities, even though we have sets that are proper subsets of each other, are still the same size. Oh my gosh. What about the rational numbers? Well, first of all, you need to know what a rational number is. A rational number is any number that can be written as a fraction. Any number that can be written as a fraction where the numerator and the denominator are integers. We can't stick any square roots in there. Okay? So a rational number is any fraction. So I want to know, can I do this with any fraction? These three bullets are the same question. Is the set of natural numbers the same size as the rationals? Is the set of rationals countable, mathematical term, or listable? Can the rational numbers be ordered? Can you order every fraction? Oh, well, I don't know. This array that I've made here, I made this array, I thought, OK, I'm going to write down every fraction. I'm going to write down every fraction that has a denominator of 1. I'm going to write down every fraction that has a denominator of 2. Every fraction that has a denominator of 3, 4, 5. Every fraction that has a denominator of negative 1. Every fraction that has a denominator of negative 2, and so on. I do realize that I've written some fractions twice. But that's OK, I can always throw those out at the end. Will this array have every fraction on it eventually? Will 1,376 divided by 5 be on this array eventually? Yes, they go off to infinity in all directions. So now we have a set of numbers that goes off to infinity in infinitely many ways. Can I order these numbers? Can I line them up with the natural numbers in any way? And I think I can. You ready? How about this? How about we match 1 with 0, 2 with 1 over 1, 3 with negative 1 over 1, 4 with 2 over 1, and so on, and spiral around like this, making an ordering of every fraction. Making an ordering of every fraction. The rational numbers are countable. The rational numbers are the same size as the natural numbers, or the even numbers, or the, or, or the integers. They're all the same size. The Fibonacci numbers, the prime numbers, they're all the same size. And for a long, long time, that's what we thought. We thought all infinite sets were the same size. And then along comes this man, Georg Cantor. He was a very fine mathematician. And Georg Cantor proposed the idea that some infinities are actually larger than others. What? The mathematical world says, what? Everything is countable. 
we can make a one-to-one -one correspondence with every set. Georg Cantor says, no, I have a way to do it that, that shows that some infinities are larger than the others. And you know what we do as human beings. You know what we do. We know what we know. And we do not like new ideas. We say we do, but we really don't. We know what we know, and we don't like new ideas. Georg Cantor had a teacher whose name was Leopold Kronecker, and Leopold Kronecker did not like this whole notion. I do not know Leopold Kronecker because he lived before my time, but I have to believe that he was also threatened by Georg Cantor's knowledge. And he started blackballing Georg Cantor. And he blackballed him so that Georg Cantor couldn't get a professional teaching job in Europe at the time. Georg Cantor ends up having a nervous breakdown. He ends up in an insane asylum, and he dies there. This is a horrible story of human nature. This is a story of we don't like new ideas. We did this with Galileo also. When Galileo dared to mention that the Earth could possibly revolve around the sun, we were egocentric at the time and didn't like that. So we imprisoned him. I think when new ideas happen, we have to examine them. Some new ideas aren't, aren't really, don't have a lot of credence. But some new ideas are monumentally going to change what you do. And I think we need to accept new ideas maybe a little better than we do. So Georg Cantor says, all right, let's talk about the real numbers. Now, the real numbers, if you're not a math person, the real numbers are all those rational numbers, all those fractions, and also the set of infinite non-repeating decimals, those weirdo numbers that you usually round off, right? <laughs> okay, the infinite non-repeating decimals. We're going to put those together. That's called the real numbers. The rationals and the irrationals together, a union of those two sets, is the real numbers. So let's see if we can make a one-to-one -one correspondence with the real numbers. And that's what we've done here. We've made a list of all the real numbers, dot, dot, dot. This is going to go on forever. We've made a list of all the real numbers and the natural numbers. And Georg Cantor says, your list is not complete. The mathematical world says, what? And he says, I want, oh, excuse me. Um, he said, if you change one digit in a number, does that mean the number is different? Yes, one digit in a number means that the number is different. So he wants to look at the tenths place in the number that you're calling one, the hundredths place in the number you're calling two, the thousandths place in the number you're calling three, and follow this diagonal down and change that digit. So you are changing one digit in infinitely many numbers. Now, how can we do that? We can do it lots of ways. But let's say if the digit on the diagonal front to the right of the decimal point is a 2, we'll make it a 7. If it's not a 2, we'll make it a 2. That would effectively change every digit, right? And that gives us this number, 27772727 dot, dot, dot. This number cannot be on this list because it differs from the first no Oh, heavens. <laughs> It differs from the first number in the tenths place and the second number in the hundredths place and the third number in the thousandths place and the fourth number in the ten thousandths place and so on. The real numbers cannot be ordered. They cannot make a one-to-one -one correspondence with the natural numbers. Oh my gosh, spectacular thought to the stratosphere. The real numbers are larger than the infinity that you think about every day. The real numbers are larger, larger, larger. Oh, I'm almost out of breath by this. This is, this is just unbelievably amazing. So the question's going to become this. Is there any set larger than that? Is there any set larger than a set that is larger than the counting numbers. And the only way to think about this is I'm going to have to take you back to the finite world. You'll be relieved. OK, we're going back to the finite world. Let's look at subsets of sets. If a set has one element, it's going to have two subsets, or two to the first power subsets. If a set has two elements, it's going to have four subsets. I have them listed there. Or two to the second subsets. If a set has three elements, it's going to have eight subsets, or two to the third. So let's make a set 
of these subsets. That's called a power set. A power set is the set of all subsets of any set. The set of all subsets. So you take a set, you make all the subsets. If a set has a certain number of elements, it's going to have two to that power number of subsets, like the examples that we had. Three elements gave you two to the third subsets. Five elements is going to give you two to the fifth, or 32 subsets. So doesn't that mean that the cardinality of the power set, the number of elements in the power set of a set, is larger than the set itself? Well, we were talking about infinity. So the question was, is there any set larger than the real numbers? And I would like you to just strap the stratosphere onto your hat today and think about the power set of the real numbers. Holy cow. The power set of the real numbers would be every subset of the real numbers. Every real number, the singleton set, any pair of real numbers, any triple of real numbers, any quadruple of real numbers, any quintuple of real numbers, any sextuple, any septuple, any dodectuple, any combination of real numbers, that set is going to be larger than the real numbers. So now we have one infinity nested inside another. Unbelievable. And now, what if I take the power set of that set? Oh my goodness, if I take the power set of that set, and maybe the power set of that set, and maybe the power set of that set, you are going to have infinities nested inside other infinities, and oh my gosh, this is giving me a headache, I can't believe this. How high will this go? How big is infinity? Just imagine that.